Solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Here are the state standards that we'll be covering in this lesson and your success criteria. You need to be able to solve exponential equations. You need to be able to solve logarithmic equations and you need to be able to solve exponential inequalities. There are two vocabulary terms that are new in this section. Exponential equations is the first one. Exponential equations are equations in which variable expressions occur as exponents. So it's exponential equation when you have an equation and variables show up as exponents. Logarithmic equations are equations that involve one or more logarithms of variable expressions. Your key ideas for this lesson for a property of equality for exponential equations. Algebraically, it's read if b is a positive real number other than 1. Remember, it's not exponential because 1 to any power is just 1. So b, your base cannot be 1. But any positive real number other than 1, and it does have to be positive here, it says b to the x power equals b to the y power if and only if x equals y. So basically, if you have the same base, that means your exponents are equal. Here's an example. 3 to the x equals 3 to the fifth. That means x equals 5 because they have the same base. All right, key idea, property of equality for logarithmic equations. If b, x, and y are positive real numbers, b is not equal to 1 again, then log base b of x equals log base b of y if and only if x equals y. So again, if you've got the same log base, then x equals y. Here's an example. If log base 2 of x equals log base 2 of 7, that means x equals 7. Example 1, solving exponential equations. All right, we just talked about the properties of exponents, properties of equality. Basically, if you have the same base, you can set the exponents equal and solve. All right, so that's easy if the base is automatically the same. If not, you may have to rewrite it a little bit and um, make the base the same. So in this case, we know that we're going to have a base of 10 and 100, hopefully that comes easy to you as 10 squared. 10 squared or 10 times 10 is 100. So we have to rewrite the left-hand side as 10 squared. So let's just write this as 10 squared. And then that's already to the x power. So basically I just wrote 100 as 10 squared to the x power. And then when we have 1 over 10, we know that's a negative exponent. So that's the same as 10 to the negative 1. And 10 to the negative 1 is already raised to the x minus 3 power. All right, and again, why did we do that? We did that so now we have the same base. 10 is our base. If we have the same base, we can set these equal and solve. Well, they're already set equal, but we can just pretend like the bases are no longer here. 2 times x, remember a power to a power, properties of exponents, that becomes multiplication. So that's 2x and negative 1 will be distributed to the x minus 3. So that will be negative x And then negative 1 times negative 3 is plus 3. Now we have a variable on both sides. We have 2x equals negative x plus 3. So we need to get the variable on one side. So let's add x to both sides. So we have, it's supposed to be a plus sign right here. 2x plus 1x is 3x. 3x equals 3. Divide by 3. x equals 1. And you can always plug.
plug it in and check it. So 100 to the first power equals 100. And then put 1 in here. So 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Okay, do 10 or 1 over 10 to the negative 2 turns into 10 squared. When you use properties of exponents and 10 squared equals 100. So you can plug that in and check it very quickly and see that that does work, that it does indeed make this a true statement, which means the equation works when x equals 1. So x equals 1 has to be the solution. Example 1b, 2 to the x power equals 7. So in order to use the um, property of equality for exponential equations, we need to have the same base. Since 2 and 7 are both prime numbers and we can't rewrite the base to be the same like we did for a part, now we have to think about how can I rewrite this exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. Remember, exponential equations and logarithms are inverses of each other. So if you can't use 1 to solve, you could use the other to solve. So we know that we have 2 to the x power, so our base is 2. So if we write the equation, remember if you have an equation and you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, then it's still equal. So what we're going to do is take both sides of the equation to log base 2. All right, so we're going to have log base 2 of 2 to the x equals, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, log base 2 of 7. Now, why did I choose log base 2? Well, because this left side, the base is 2. And if I have log base 2 of 2, that cancels out, or that's just equivalent to 1. So that means this left side now is just x. So we can bring the x down equals, and then we still have log base 2 of 7. And if you want to check that, you can pull up your calculator here and you can type in, uh, go to math, go to your log base button. So let's go up here to log base and you can do log base 2 of 2 and it'll show you that that is equal to 1. So if you have a log in your base and the number after that is the same, so if this is log base 3 of 3, that would be 1. Log base 4 of 4 is 1. So we use log base 2 in order to get rid of the base on the left-hand side here. All right, so again, that's why that canceled. That equals 1. Bring down my x, and then so far we still have log base 2 of 7 on the other side. Well, now all we have to do is evaluate that using our calculator just like we did a second ago. So let's go back to math, go up to log base, and I'm going to type in log base 2, and this time log base 2 of 7. And that is equal to approximately 2.807. So let's use the squiggly lines, that's the approximate, so it's not exactly equal because we rounded it. And so that's x is approximately 2.807. So using properties of logarithms will also help you solve um, exponential equations sometimes when they do not have the same base. Example 2, modeling real life. You are cooking a lychee, an Ethiopian stew. When you take it off the stove, its temperature is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The room temperature is 70 degrees, and the cooling rate of the stew is R equals 0 0.046. How long will it take to cool the stew to a serving temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit? All right, so in order to solve this equation or this real-life model, we need to look at something called Newton's Law of Cooling. All right, so this law states that for a cooling substance with an initial temperature of T sub zero, so your initial temperature 
is t sub 0. So we know from um, over here it says the initial temperature is 212. So let's just go ahead and jot that down. So t of 0 equals 212. That's the initial temperature. All right. And then it says the temperature t after t minutes can be modeled by this equation here. So we want it to be 100 degrees. So it says how long will it take to cool this to to a serving temperature of 100 degrees. So that's what we want T to be when all is said and done. So we want T to equal 100 degrees. That's when we want to serve it. We don't want to serve it before it cools to 100 degrees or it would be too hot to eat. Still seems like it'd be pretty hot, but anyways. All right, so it says well, where T of R is the surrounding temperature. So it says the room temperature is 70. So that means we have T of R, T sub R, is 70. And R is the cooling rate of the substance. And it gives us R here, the cooling rate. All right, and we already have that, but we'll write that down as well. So R equals 0 0.046. All right, so basically what we need to do is take the numbers that we are given and use those to plug into this Newton's Law of Cooling and, um, and then just evaluate to see what we have. So first we're going to substitute T. So we're using this equation right here, okay? So we're going to have T equals 100. Well, let's go ahead and write the whole equation down. So we're going to have T equals T sub 0 E to the negative RT and then plus T R. All right, so I'm going to pause the video because we're about to run out of time. And what I'm going to do is just take these numbers that came from the equation and fill them in. I'll be back in just a second. All right, now I've filled in the given information into this formula or this equation right here. And now we're just going to simplify a few things. If we subtract 70 from both sides, That's going to leave me 30. And then 212 minus 70. 212 minus 70 is 142. And then that's going to be times E. And that's raised to the negative 0 0.046 times T. All right, now divide both sides by 142. So I've already done this in the calculator. 30 divided by 142 is about 0.211. And that's going to be about equal to, this is going to cancel, e to the negative 0.046t. Now since we have a base e, we can use a natural logarithm to solve this. So we're going to say the natural log of 0.211 is approximately equal to the natural log of e to the negative 0.046t. All right, now use your calculator to evaluate the natural log of 0.211. That's going to be about negative 1.5. All right, since the natural base, natural log base E of E is 1, that leaves just the exponent here. So we've already evaluated natural log of 0.211 to be negative 1.556. So that's going to be equal to negative 0.046t. Divide both sides by that negative 0.046. And that gives us t is about 33.8. That means it's going to take about 34 minutes to cool 
before this stew 